Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring it on a bite-sized piece. So today we got a lot to go over. And what we see is a market in turmoil. So we're going to talk about why that is, beginning with uh, the Fed and the minutes that were released. We're going to take a look at how that affected the traditional and crypto markets. And then we're also going to talk about some good news in equities super cycle. And we're going to take a look at what is being said by uh, head of Goldman Sachs. And finally, we're going to talk about what's your focus? What are you focusing on right now? And are you doing the best thing? for you as an investor. So to get all into this, let's first take a look what's going on into our market. Today it is the, the 6th of January, beautiful day in Puerto Rico yet again, about 80 degrees, uh, should not be too bad. So, I mean, the weather's nice, just the market's not. And we've got a market cap of uh, 2.06 trillion. And I'm fairly certain we're gonna go below 2 trillion and then we're gonna see some more pain. Now I could be wrong, but uh, that's what I see where, it seems like there's just a cascade effect and there's reasons behind that and if we even delve deeper into like prices i mean bitcoin's at forty-three thousand, uh ethereum is around 3500 and everything else is just down across the board i think the only one that's up is uh decentraland or, or mana and i think phantom so besides that everything else is pretty much down there may be some other different ones uh, outside the top uh, 40 that are uh, up and good for that but across the board total market cap is looking pretty paltry so the question then is why why did all this happen and what is going on? So we have to take a look at our friends at the Fed. And the Fed, I used to call our MVP for raising everything and actually, uh, or for raising inflation. That was great as a, because Bitcoin was pretty much made for that and the crypto market was made for that. Unfortunately, it works both ways. So here's what is going on. The Fed minutes point to a possible rate increase in March. Those are the Federal Reserve officials at their meeting last month, I had a faster timetable for raising interest rates this year, uh, potentially as soon as in March, uh, all because of inflation. Stocks sure, uh, turned sharply lower after the minutes were released Wednesday afternoon, which is yesterday. And uh, it was uh, quite a drop, as you could imagine. Uh, most central bank officials in projections released after last month's meeting uh, stated that uh, they're going to pencil in at least three quarter percentage point rate increases this year. So again, if we're thinking to ourselves, well, how much are they actually going to raise it? And what's going to happen? And also, uh, they're, they're also going to stop that buyback program, which is propping up the entire stock market. And they're going to say, you know, what, we're going to taper off a little bit more aggressively than we thought we were going to. And this is all about inflation because they thought it was transitory and they figured out, guess not. And because of that, they're going to have to raise some rates because you can't just keep printing everything. Now, modern MMT, modern monetary theory, they'll say you can do whatever you want. And uh, maybe they're correct. I, I'm not here to, to debate that, but I can tell you right now, it's uh, causing a little bit of havoc in the market. So uh, if we take a look then, well, what did this actually do to the traditional market and to our crypto market? Well, if we just take a look at the S&P, as of uh, yesterday, remember today is the 6th, January 4th, everything's going along pretty well, 3rd, 4th, and then right around here when the news was released, you just see a huge drop off because people are like, wow, this is awful. Is this going to be the end all doomsday? No, but I got to tell you, this drop off was a massive opportunity. And then even uh, this morning, we woke, as we wake up, things are kind of recovering already because they're like, okay, Here's the shock, no big deal, and then we'll go forward. So how did that affect our, our market? Well, obviously we just saw the, the prices go down. Has anything fundamentally changed? Has Bitcoin been hacked? Has somebody came out and said, yeah, I'm Satoshi Nakamoto, and uh, now I'm the CEO of Bitcoin, or I'm gonna take over all the crypto? No, nothing fundamentally has, hap has changed, but there are bigger things at play. And one of those bigger things is leverage plays and no i talk about that here on my on my show i don't care if you're if you're trading on leverage i mean it's i mean more power to you uh i just say if you're going to do that uh be responsible and uh and hopefully you pick the right side and even i even tweeted out today i'm like hey sorry for your leverage traders and somebody wrote in they're like hey i shorted everything i'm doing pretty good so yeah and in that respect congratulations you just shorted everything and probably made a boatload of money. But the thing that I see, this is from CryptoQuant, if we're taking about uh, estimated leverage ratio, we're hitting all time highs again and again and again. And people just, either they, it's just amazing to me. I don't know if they just feel that lucky or what, because a lot of longs got liquidated. And if we go above 0 0.2, that's massively high. And we're at 0 0.22. We came down a little bit, 
but not too much. And then we have to take a look at well, what happened with the liquidations. Well, in the last 24 hours, he had almost a billion billion dollars worth uh, of uh, people getting liquidated. And if we further break it down, down here, down, down, we can see that uh, liquidations, if you just take a look here, uh, the green are all the longs that get liquidated and the red is the shorts. And it, statistically, if you take a look in the past, uh, shorts have done pretty darn good, I must admit, uh, as compared to the long. So if, am I mad uh, that uh, the uh, shorts got the better of, of the longs and the leverage plays? No, because in all honesty, they're here to regulate the market just a little bit. And people will talk about manipulation and things like that and whatever else, sure. But I think if you're talking about that and you're really concerned about it, maybe as an investor, you need to take a step back and go, am I doing the right things for me and my family, the things that I'm doing? Uh, as far as like investing. I can't give you financial advice, but there's a reason why I'm pretty chill on these days. It's because I don't over leverage myself. I don't give up more than I can actually afford. And I just know that uh, as time goes on, it's more important of, uh, it's better than the timing of the market as related to time in the market. I think time in the market always wins out. So uh, that is what is going on with our market. And I've, you know, I've even talked about this even last month. There was the, and you notice that's the same thumbnail because sometimes I get lazy. But in all honesty, I mean, I said this last month, I go, look, uh, I think that we're going to have some, some, some big problems. I was hoping that December was going to be pretty good. Didn't work out. I thought I said fireworks, but it didn't happen. But I said, I think there's some some more pain on the horizon and i laid out my case as to why that is and people were like rob you're just a relic you're from 2017 and you have ptsd all those days ago because there's so many financial institutional players here that they will not allow the market to drop and then people were even talking about super cycles for crypto and i was like i don't think that's going to happen because as long as there's greed in people, they're going to short the market and they're going to make a mass amount of money and they're going to make you pay for that. And here we are. So again, just be careful out there and uh, do your best thing. So if we take a look at that, then there's also some other, some other news that's in the middle of the road, and that is uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan uh, is having an, up, an, an uphill battle uh, with their political regime and what is going on for the power sources over there. So this was interesting because Kazakhstan internet shutdown sheds light on a big Bitcoin mining mystery. Uh, it was difficult to establish how much of all the world's coins Kazakhstan was, was minting. And on January 5th, the world got at least a rough answer. Violent protests erupted over the soaring cost of fuel and the nation's autocratic rule. And I actually tweeted that out that they've actually doubled uh, their prices for energy. And there is just a massive riots going on. I think they're booting out their, uh, their elected officials and it's getting pretty nasty over there. But because of that, uh, the largest telecom provider uh, shut down or shuttered the internet to interrupt communications among the opposition's ranks. When the web goes down, miners, Bitcoin miners, can't communicate with the Bitcoin network. And the hash rate, the random codes that win fresh awards of Bitcoin collapses. A few hours in the outage, 12% of Bitcoin's worldwide computational power had vanished. And the, and the hash rates for like Ant Pool Pool and a Binance Pool all fell between 12 and 16%. So what does this mean? This means that there are problems on the horizon with as far as like proof of work and Bitcoin and what's going on because there is a lot of issues with energy. Is this uh, a problem that can't be solved? Absolutely not, which leads me to one of my next points. And it's going to talk about uh, the super cycle in a bit. This is uh, Jeff Curry. He's the global head of commodities at Goldman Sachs Group. And what he's going to talk about is twofold. First, he's going to talk about uh, the different possibilities as far as equities or stocks and why it's important that we get in this now. When I watched this video, I'm like, was this recently? Because we just had a pretty big... Uh, uh, pullback for the S&P. And everybody's like, yeah, just just happened. January 6th. And I'm like, no, oh, okay. So listen to what he says here. And then also what he says about nuclear power and green energy. This will all make sense in a second. Bullish on commodities, what will outperform the rest in 2022? Um, extremely bullish and on commodities and real assets, you know, broadly. And I, I think it just, you, you look at the setup we have going into this year. 
You've got equities, you know, stretch valuations, you know, the convexity at bonds, you know, at a very, very high level. Um, you have record dislocations in energy markets, metals markets, agriculture markets, and you still have a lot of money in, in the system. And then finally, you look at the investment positions in commodities, it's very low. Um, what does that tell you? You know, the best place to be right now, particularly given the Fed pivot, are commodities. Um, so we think you're going to see another year of outperformance of commodities and real assets more broadly. And we again, we go back to our core thesis that you know we put out back you know in October of 2020. This is the beginning of a commodity super cycle that's likely to go on for not only years, potentially a decade. So yeah, crazy, right? And the question then is, well, Rob, why are you even talking about this? Who cares about with what equities do and, and the traditional markets? It's because we're all connected. And we actually did a, did a video just a couple of days ago where we talked about the correlation between crypto, or actually mostly Bitcoin, and the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and all the different traditional uh, f uh, finance plays. And it found out that there was correlation, but not as heavy as we thought it was. However, I'm here to tell you, I think as time goes on, and more of these institutions get into it, I think that we are going to be more heavily correlated to what goes on because we love it when the institutions come in, these hedge funds and everything else, and they bring all their money, but we hate it when they actually have to sell. And believe me, at some point, they will sell, and that is what is going on. So that is just the first part of what we're talking about, which actually you know, says, well, if he's talking about how there's actually a super cycle, if equities goes up, commodities go up, and that means that we should be okay for the crypto angel assets. Now, could the uh, crypto or could the uh, traditional finance, could S&P 500, could all the different equities just, just fall and just get eradicated and we can have like a, a huge bearish winter and not affect the crypto market? Sure, but I don't think it's very likely, but it could happen. Who knows? Uh, nobody has a crystal ball. I'm just trying to tell you what uh, my opinions are on this. And the next part here is we just saw the issue with Kazakhstan and energy. We've heard Kevin O'Leary talk about ESG. We've heard uh, Elon Musk talk about how, you know, the different uh, power sources and how much it takes for Bitcoin and blah, 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 right? So the next part is crucially important to understand what's happening with power and how the world is going to change things and how they see it. And that's going to lead us into proof of work. Um, Jeff, I want to ask about uranium and then we go back to, to oil. So we're seeing this crisis over in Kazakhstan. Is, is there a, going to be a potential crisis for the price of uranium? I know it's very difficult to get spot prices. Um, uranium has a very bullish um, outlook on a you know, medium and longer term basis. I think the realization is becoming around the world that you really want to solve climate change and decarbonize. You need to do this as with nuclear power and you need to do it with micro generators. Um, so the, the, the outlook is extremely positive just from a fundamental perspective. And then you throw Kazakhstan issues on top of it. It just creates a, you know, a much more bullish outlook for uranium. So actually, I, the one thing I'd be watching right now is for one of these governments in Europe to classify nuclear power as being ESG friendly or green. And this really begins to take off. And I think we're getting really close to that happening. Funny you should say that, Jeff, because there is a newsletter that I'm subscribed to. It's free. It's called The Daily Upside. And we had talked about this actually two days ago. It's kind of funny. And they had pointed out in one of their three morning briefs that this one right here in pink, nuclear energy is poised to be labeled green and sustainable by the EU. I kind of just skipped over it because it wasn't what we were talking about. We we're talking about market space at tougher 2022. If we go down here, it states very clearly, EU plans to classify nuclear and natural gas as green energy. Leaked documents from Brussels over the weekend reveal the, the European Commission is planning to reclassify nuclear power and some forms of natural gas to contribute forms of energy production as green opening the door to billions of dollars flowing in the new category of sustainable investment. So if we take a look at everything that's going on and people are talking about, well, you know, Bitcoin takes so much different power and then we shut it down in Kazakhstan. Not so, because just like we just talked about, if they can label it as green, nuclear power could be the way. And of course, natural gas. You know where there's a ton of natural gas? Texas. And you know where there's a ton of Bitcoin miners? Texas. So if this just goes through, so much the better. I mean, the EU, I don't know what it is labeled here, but uh, if that is ESG compliant, so much the better. So we take a look at what's going on. Not so great in the market. We take a look at the reasons behind it and then potentially what could, what could happen later. 
not so bad. So the next point and the last one we're going to talk about is what's your focus? Because right now it gets very tough to to walk away from the news, to walk away from your portfolio, to walk away and just talk about what the heck happens to crypto and uh, everything that I had invested into it. And it's like a, a friend of ours, Nick Murray says, and uh, Nick is the advisor to the advisors. He is uh, one of the old school people that actually got into traditional finance 50 plus years ago. And he says this really great statement, don't mistake temporary declines for a permanent loss. Again, what are you investing into? Do you believe in the concept? Do you believe in the utility? Do you believe in the team? Do you believe in tokenomics? Well, it might be a good possibility just to hang on and just don't do anything or buy the dip. It's all up to you. I can't make those decisions for you. But I can say this, if you're focusing just on the market, I think you're missing out on the bigger picture, uh, which is life. Look, today, this is probably what I'll be doing, swimming back there and trying to shake off what happened. Also, uh, as a friendly reminder, uh, if we take a look at, there we go, Magic Spoon. And it was in the bottom left-hand corner the whole time. And uh, what I like about Magic Spoon is that, uh, first of all, if you want to get in shape, it's very difficult when you're eating some high sugary carbohydrate foods. Now, consult your physician. If you're diabetic and all those things, it's a little bit different for you, right? But this one, high protein, low carb cereal, and it tastes fantastic. Uh, you can take a look here. Magic Spoon has between 12 and 14 grams of protein and net carbs, four gram and zero grams of sugar and all that stuff. As compared to Fruit Loops, all the rest of the stuff that tastes honestly delicious and uh, all the different ones. And even like uh, Special K Protein, which has very little protein, whatever else. So uh, if you're looking just to what to focus on, maybe sometimes it's good just to focus on your health. And uh, if you can get into that, maybe it'd be helpful just to eat a little bit better. And there's an, there's an observation. Links in the description, you can pick up Magic Spoon. You can also pick up the uh, newsletter, the Daily Upside. That is also free. Well, actually, Daily Upside is free. Uh, Magic Spoon is, I think you get like a 10 or 15% uh, discount. I'll put it in the description and uh, that is it for today. So look, I, uh, I know there's a lot of things going on and it's not the greatest of times because we were hoping for like this huge, massive bull run, but can't all go up and that's just how it is. So if you like today's video, found a little, little comfort, a little uh, knowledge, give it a thumbs up. Always consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are very time sensitive and that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.